is like now. 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 They knew what I ate, they knew what I drank, they knew what movies that I watched. It's all happening. Complete the transmission. Television with attitude. Now, BPM, everything you wanted to know about the dance music scene. Vibes that are alive in the clubs, DJs, new labels, and of course, a look at the dance music chart. for the last one. Yeah, I'm back from my tax haven in the grill, and uh, as you can see, we're doing it in style. Hi, Dad. Um, anyway, more thrills this week than you've ever, ever possibly imagined could be possible on BPM. Yeah, we've got everybody that was ever in BPM, well, all the good people anyway, none of the sad losers. We've got the DJs, the artists, the promoters. We've got fantastic clips, wonderful dance sequences, and it's all for you in the next hour. Indeed. the IDA Awards, my situation goes way back to like, you know, 10, 15 years, where I've given a lot of people a really good time over the years, and it was a very, very big shock and surprise to, to know that I came first out of, well, it's 50,000 votes and 50 DJs that are nominated from the UK, and I came through, so um, I'm very, very pleased with that result, obviously, but uh, shocked at the same time, and uh, I, I, all I can say really is respect to the people who, who put me there. We 
when the media brings things from a, um, a ghetto point of view, saying like, you know, if a drive-by or something happened, they will never bring you the whole story. They'll just tell you three black men were killed in the drive-by, a black car left the scene, the suspects are three black men. They won't tell you what, what, what took place in order for this to happen. That's what us rappers do. We show you what causes that. There's no money on the street, so we slang dope. There's no money on the street, so we take from whoever got money. We're showing you why this happened. See, people don't understand when people, when the media brought that out like that, all they did was sold me another million records. Who listen to the words that I speak? When we talk about where we're from, right, we're going to have to talk about London and England to our kids. Do you know what I mean? So basically, you, you know, you know, you know your culture, but if you're born here, you're, you're, everybody's basically the same here. Do you know what I mean? I mean, the kids are going to have to talk about London to their kids, you know I mean? they can't, we, can't talk, we can't be talking about like Shai Fix, it's in Jamaica, yeah Shai? Yeah. They can't be talking about Kingston and then places like Jamaica or whatever, because we're not from there, do you know what I mean? Uh, we have to talk like, to our kids we're going to say, yeah, well this happened in Ballam, well this happened in Tooting, you know what I mean? Big up the Tooting squad, you know? Yeah. Dancer, I'm a tapper, I'm a jazz dancer, I'm a, I have a, I'm totally into, I'm a saxophone player, I'm, a, I'm totally into music, and um, I've got my own studio and I play around and I, I do things and I produce, you know, tunes and do my own thing, but this is, this is something different, it's really fun. Selection. He's backstage here, ready to play. See, as you manage to fit it all in, and I mean the job. <laughs> I don't know. They just sort of all sort of merge and gel, and you know, you sort of pretend you're everywhere, but you're not really everywhere. I'm like the Drifters. You remember? The Drifters. You know, they, you know three places in one night. I've got doubles. <laughs> you got doubles. So watch out. There are more than one. If this is true, there was one more Pete Tong. The need to do impersonation. That's right. In Corfu, we had to actually go down and sort him out. He was uh, going out uh, every Saturday night on a Mediterranean island. Um, yeah, pretending to be me, firing the jingles out and everything. It's quite funny. I had people phoning up saying they were going to stab me next time I was on the deck and shit like that. And um, basically, I was just like, well, you know, do what you've got to do. I mean, you know, I was. You're not. It's going to worry you, but. I've got a lot of people on my side as well, and I, I think if someone's going to do something, they're going to do it, they're not going to tell you about it, so this is life. <laughs>
Well, welcome back to uh, the best of BPM part two. And as you can see, Brenda and me again, cozy uh, in this rather understated white stretch limo. Yeah, yeah, and I'll tell you, times are tough, but Dave, we're still together. Even after your many disappearances, Which I never I, lost you. I can't explain. Oh, darling, you don't have to explain. I'm just glad you're back. Enough of that, anyway. I think it's time to check out some more of the places and faces we checked out while we were doing BPM. I always have time for men. Always, because I love men. I gotta find the right one. I like strawberries, chocolate strawberries, roses, champagne, and presents that I never know about. Then I'll be like, captured. He doesn't have to be rich. Rich in his heart would be fine. Um, no, I think that I can hold down the man. It's just that I just think I'm so bubbly and, and sort of like nutty. <laughs> Religious beliefs don't have much to do with like traditional church beliefs or whatever. So I know it, it would make sense if it was like, you know, whatever, an exploration of my religious beliefs, but it's actually just sort of more an exploration of like the church aesthetic and the choral aesthetic. When people think of Christians, they tend to think of, you know, hateful, judgmental people more concerned with like, social social change as opposed to personal change. And my belief is just that I read the New Testament a few years ago, and it seemed right to me. And so I try and live according to the principles there, which for me are like compassion, non-judgmentalism, humility, and it has nothing to do with, you know, condemning homosexuals or, con you know, condemning anybody. Rap is like prophecies, you know, they tell you what's going to happen. Even from the L.A. uprising, you know what I'm saying? Rappers in, in Cali have been telling you it's a time bomb about to explode for years, you know what I'm saying? And no one ever listened. So after stuff happened, then they want to look at the rappers, you know what I'm saying? And say, oh, why, why, why did this happen? When before they were saying that the rappers were promoting the violence, when they was just trying to tell you, hear it? <laughs> I don't know, you haven't only just got in here. Oh, darling. You mean you didn't 
check it out before this interview? No, not really, not really. I just walked in the door. Oh, disappointing. Kel surprise. <laughs> but what do you think it's going to be like? It'll be all right in here. It'll be all right. Good club. Will it be hard enough for you, you hardcore maniacs? Yeah, kind of, yeah. It will be. Yeah. It will be when you way. get on there, yeah. 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 <laughs> You're going to do it to them. You're going to drive them wild, yeah? Yeah, I will do. Oh. Hopefully. What can I say? You're driving me wild right now. <laughs> Before I go out, I do prepare myself quite a lot. You know, I leave time to have a bath, you know. And also, I spend quite a lot of time in the day going through my records, you know, all that sort of stuff. What's more important? Yes, when I go. So I've always got half an hour before I go out. And I work myself up to it. So I'm ready to give. Give. <laughs> Do you never think, well, burnout's just round the corner? Um, a lot of people used to think that, but you actually get a real stamina for it and you can really, you know, you can keep up. And I, I feel like everyone, if you talk to the American DJs, you know, they're all oh, well, playing like nine hour sets, you know, you can't really get into it until seven hours, you know. You know, and that it has a certain amount of truth to it because if you play for a long time, you just discover stuff and just really start to get really spontaneous. Whereas if you just go to a club, and play for an hour and a half every week, you tend to sort of think, oh, these are the records that you've got to play and, you know, to move the crowd, whereas you can experiment more if you have a longer time. And, you know, I reckon the more you play, the better, really.
yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you ready for the beat down? I got all the sexy ladies in the place. Oh God, it's awful in here, let me tell you. It's kind of like being in your living room, only smaller. Anyway, guys, it's the final, final bit of BPM, whatever, whatever, whatever. We're back in the limo again, like you've never seen us here before. I don't think so. I haven't been here before. But I have to tell you that one of my all-time fave moments on BPM was the opening shot at the Music Factory in Leeds, where things got kind of surreal. As a matter of fact, someone got sort of scalped. Check it out. I'm going to... <laughs> oh dear, it's all gone off it. We've been up your runs and it's been hot and sweaty and as you now know, Sasha's not a shoe shop but actually a top DJ with a record bump. Dave, I think we're giving off kind of strange body language here, you know, sort of frosty. Very cool. Well, it's not body double, is it, Brenda? It's no, it certainly BPM. isn't. Music factory. Uh, Two people would make before you be with him. Michelle Pfeiffer, she's just bought a child, hasn't she? Buy she? A kid? I think she did. Oh and Madonna god. apparently wants to buy one too. You're so kidding. Yes. Oh my god, that's scandalous. I was gonna have my own. <laughs> Actually, I'm ovulating right now. Are you yes. as we speak? Yes. <laughs> I well, I, I daren't look down. <laughs> with um, the Bristol scene, you know, to us there's never been one. You can get by on a day-to-day -day basis a lot easier than you could do in London, for instance, where one day drifts into another and you, the things you, you planned at the beginning of the year just don't take place. You know I mean? At the end of the year, you just forget about how many things easy and, you know, <laughs> and you end up down the pub or, you know, whatever. It's just, you know, I mean, that's not true for everyone, obviously, you know what I mean? But that's probably our life in Bristol and how it relates to us. I'm the last one to play my own records. I really am. And you know, I never realized that a lot of people come out to hear you when you go away. They, they want to hear you play some of your own records because that's what they know you for. You know, and the, most of the requests, nine out of 10 requests they ask you are your own records. ghetto i mean I, I couldn't understand how the uk could out what did you have to lose by not by putting that record out and it's become a classic you can't find the record because it was never released as a single why i don't know it's like the biggest record and they chose to pass on it the thing with the product is we're always trying to um constantly add different styles into the music you know it's like i want i just can't cannot stick to one formula i can't get into formula techno or anything like that 
Well, that's about it from the last ever BPM and uh, both Brendan and myself and everybody at BPM Towers would like to say a big thank you to all the DJs, the clubs, the promoters, the record companies, uh, but most importantly to you out there, the clubbers, the ravers that made BPM such a success over the last few years. And uh, in response to your most frequently asked questions, uh, the answers are in this order. One, of course we did. Two, on many occasions, but it was only ever a cheeky one. And uh, three handcuffs. Okay. Are you went. mommy yet, daddy? Nearly, darling, nearly. Oh, 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 hi. I just want to tell you that all of the letters that you wrote in over the last three years really improved my reading skills. <laughs> and uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm feeling kind of trashed. I don't know if it's just three years of hard work or, or what it is, but I'm sure you're feeling trashed too. I'm feeling kind of sad. I'm getting a bit maudlin now, but... Hey, who knows? We could be back in another guise, and I'm sure another couple of glasses of champagne. <laughs> Shut up, Brenda. Woo! I'll be rocking. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.
And now, Jeff Clark presents thrilling race action selected from the different formulas in the 1995 season in Best of British Motorsport.